aside for me, would you? In here. <coughs> Would you put them over there? Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Not at all. A pleasure. Well, if there's nothing else I can do for you, I will be shooting off. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go. I must reward you for bringing in those heavy parcels for me. Oh, that wasn't heavy. At least, why, not for me. I'm used to humping quite heavy things about all day long. In my line of business, you have to, you know. Yes, you look very strong. Oh, well, you know, I'll keep myself in condition. <laughs> yes, I can see you do. Whiskey all right for you? Yes, that's all right. Thank you. Cheers. What line of business are you in, Mr... Steptoe. No, your first name. Howard. Howard. <laughs> I have an uncle in the government by that name. What, not... Oh, no. <laughs> Just an old junior minister. Oh. What exactly do you do, Harold? Why were you knocking at my door? Um, I'm a rag and bone man. A rag and bone man? How interesting. I've never met a rag and bone man before. Oh, there's lots of us about. That's my horse and cart outside. <laughs> I was hoping you might have some rags or scrap or something. I, I left a sack here uh, with a card. Did you? Yes, you might remember it was printed a uh, step and some best prices paid for old junk. And sign I'd be calling around to collect it, the lock. No, I'm sorry. I don't remember. Oh, I didn't well. see it. I don't suppose you'd have anything in a place like this. Oh, thanks for the drink. I'll be on my way. <laughs> Just a moment. I must have something that would interest you. <laughs> Why don't you help me look for it? Oh, well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit late and uh, I haven't got much time. See, uh, it's getting dark and I haven't got any lights on the cart. Then why don't you come back when you have more time? A lot more time. Yes. Well, I, I could do that. I could always call back. Because I, I expect I, I will be around this way again some time. Tomorrow? Yes. Yes, I, I could call back again tomorrow if you think there's a chance of something. <laughs> I would say there's definitely a chance. Yes, well, I, I, I wouldn't be much out of my way because I, I do... I could easily drop by because I have to pass by this way. Good. Make it early. Early? Right. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock? <laughs> I'll be free all day. <laughs> Nine o'clock. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> Well, it's always the first time for everything. Did you sleep well? No, I didn't. My leg was playing me up. Oh, what a shame. You must take care of yourself, Dad. I'll get some more of that horse liniment while I'm up. Oh, it's a lovely day, you two days. So I say, you know. You sound very happy this morning. I'm always you? happy, Dad. Uh, that's a laugh. You can trip over your face when you come down in the morning. What's come over you? Well, it's a lovely day. You can't be miserable on a day like this. Well, I've got your breakfast ready. Don't worry about it, Dad. Well, you're usually not up as early as this. You usually drag it out at the last minute. Don't worry about it, Dad. You've got enough to do. I'll get my breakfast out. 
You're not going out in a car. Yeah, of course, Sam. What do you ask? You're not going out in a car dressed like that, are you? Oh, yeah, why not? Well, you're a bit daft, isn't it? Going out collecting rags and bones with your best suit on. Well, I'm a creature of impulse. I mean, I just felt like a change. <laughs> that fed out with being scruffy all the time, you know. <laughs> well, old oh, well, won't recognise an answer, sure. And he won't be happy about going out at this time of the morning. He's used to you crawling out about half past eleven. Don't expect you to wait yet. Ah, oh, don't God, get some early morning air into his lungs. A nice crisp morning like this. Get the old steam belching out of his nose. Clear his lungs up a bit. Do him good. But how do I look? All right? Yeah, you look like an out-of-work actor. <laughs> I've been marvellous. What are you doing now, then? What do you think I'm doing? What does it look like? I'm, I'm putting this bike together. What did you get that, then? I bought it yesterday. More than you got. Oh, well, yesterday. It was foggy yesterday. They couldn't see me. Yeah. You did a good job there. Yeah. You're going in for the Tour de France, then, are you? Uh, <laughs> all right, I'll see you. I hope you do a bit better today. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to do very well today. You never had your chance, do you? And go, go into the chandlers and get some more hay. More hay? Beep, 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 beep. Rot, sir, rot. And jump it out back. No, well, don't overdo it. Now relax, Dad. Stay loose, Dad. And look after that leg. It's me. How old Steptoe? Well, I can found me. Don't shout, Harold. We don't want the whole street to hear. Push the door. You'll find it's open.
Go straight into the lounge. I won't keep you long. Good morning. Very shortly, sir. Do you want any? Aye. What? It's tea time. Do you want anything? Tea time? What time is it then? Ten past four. Ten past four? Tell me, what's he doing in there? <laughs> I'll get down in. I'm in trouble with it. No, no, I think I can manage. You never get that thing on the road, mate. <laughs> you have a hard day? Oh, yes, terrible hard day. Full go. That's it all the time I was. <laughs> Did you get anything? <laughs> Junk, I mean. No, I, I didn't. It's very quiet. I didn't get anything at all. You looked, I suppose. Of course I looked. I've been all over the place. <laughs> very slack, though. I never know things so slack. 
<laughs> we might have to close the gates soon. So he didn't get anything at all? No. Oh, well, I expect you'll be wanting your tea. You must be tired out after all that hard work. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty not tired, Dad. You know how it is. It, it, it's very tiring, especially when you don't get anything. It's very worrying. <laughs> yeah, I oh, know. Ah. I was speaking to some of the lads in the cafe. They said they didn't get nothing, neither. It's quite all round, it, it seems. They said they'd never known it so far. Oh, you've been down at the cafe, have you? Had your lunch down there, did you? Yeah. What'd you have? Eh? Hey? What'd you have to eat? Oh, uh, meat pie, mash, gravy, uh, two slices of bread butter, uh, baked well tart and custard, and a cup of tea. All right, was it? Yeah, you know, salsa. It don't change much, does it? No. You see ginger in there? Ginger? Uh, yes, I, I think he was in there. I see. Was Lenny in there? Lenny? Uh, Lenny. Oh, Lenny! Oh, yes, he, he come in there. Oh, Lenny! Oh, Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> How's his dad? Any better? Uh, uh, any better? You did ask him, I hope. Yes, of course I asked him. Yes, he is better. He said he was a bit better this morning. Why, what's wrong with him then? What do you mean? <laughs> well, you said he was better, I'm asking what's wrong with him. Well, he's ill. Ain't he? I don't know. Is he? <laughs> well, you said, is he any better? I mean, if he's not ill, what do you want to go and ask if he's any better for? Oh, this damn is a bleeding liar, you are. What are you talking about? You ain't been nowhere near that cab. Yes, I no, have. No, you ain't. And you ain't been on the cart all day either. I can tell you exactly where you've been from nine o'clock this morning until ten past four this afternoon. I've been out on the job. I know you yeah. <laughs> have. I followed you. You what? I followed you. Get away. You didn't follow me. You couldn't have kept up. You were just about knackered by the time we got down the skinners on. <laughs> I was on this. Oh, the bike? Yeah, the bike. So why? You can't ride a bike. Oh, can't I? I'll give you ten yards, start leg or no leg. Forty years ago, I was sprint champion of the East Surreys, mate, and I haven't forgotten to do it yet, either. You're lying. You didn't follow me. That bike don't go. I saw you outside that house all day in the house, all standing outside shivering. We were looking for junk in there. Liar! Well, there was a lot of stuff in there, we were sorting it out. Seven hours you weren't in there. Yes, well, I was pricing. I mean, you know how long it takes to price it. I, I, I mean, they're there the, the, and they sort out, they're clearing out. You see, I'm going around tomorrow to collect it. You ain't got nowhere near there. I know, mug, mate. I haven't just fallen off the Christmas tree, you know. I know what's going on. <laughs> Putting on your best suit, shaving, give yourself away, don't you? I oh, know you. Birds, that's what it is. Birds. <laughs> birds is the only thing you punch your head up for. <laughs> oh, that's why I spent a day with a bird. It breaks the monotony a bit, don't it? Anyway, what's it got to do with you? I'm over 21, I can do as I like. You, you mind your own business. Look. Let's have some tea. You get no tea to me. You can tea if you work for it. Why didn't you ask your fancy bit for some? Or were you thrown out before her old man came in? She is married. I don't know. I didn't ask them. You keep away from her. I'm going to give you some advice. Advice? Oh, this ought to be good. <laughs> You're a bit late in life, but nevertheless, welcome. <laughs> Oh, come on, then. Let's hear it. Lord Chesterfield's letters to his son. <laughs> Let's hear these pearls of wisdom. Son, I'm older than you are. Mark <laughs> I wish you had told me that when I was a boy. What a difference it would have made to my life. My dad is older than me. <laughs> oh, Listen to me. I've seen a lot more of life than you have. And I'm telling you, no good can come of this. Well, it's done me a lot of good already. It's restored my self-confidence for a start. It's very nice to know the birds still fancy when you're pushing 40. Maybe when I'm as old as you are and past it, I shall start moralising and tat-tatting. But at the moment, I've got no complaints. I'm not moralising. I'm trying to explain something There's to you. There's nothing to explain, Dad. I'm just still desirable, that's all. <laughs> Listen to me, Harold. I know what I'm talking about. 
This bird, she lives in a posh house. She's not a bit of old brass. Have you stopped to ask yourself why a bird like that should fancy a load of old tat like you? That's a nice thing to say about your own son, isn't it? A load of old tat. And I'm polished dumb in my boots. Now, you know what I mean. She's got the pick of the land. Why bother with you? She fancies me, that's yeah. all. And she fancies me for myself. It made no difference to her, me being a rag and bone man. Yeah, you great bird. She fancies you because you are a rag and bone man. Oh, what's that supposed to she mean? She don't fancy for yourself. She fancies you because you are common. Oh, look, you've a lot to learn. If you think anything's going to come out of this, you're going to be hurt. She won't want to know you in the morning. She's had a bit of fun. She's been amusing herself with you, can't you see that? Well, I've been having a bit of a giggle myself. <laughs> It goes deeper with that than you, don't it? I know you. You've been waiting for something like this to happen. You've given up trying to get out of this business on your own steam. You're hoping for some rich woman to come and take you out of it. Well, they won't. I don't want to see you hurt, Harold. I've seen it all before. They're all the same, these rich birds. Her old man goes away for the day. They're bored. They tried everything. They're jaded. They're looking for something new and exciting. So they have a devil with a bit of rough. Don't keep calling me a bit of rough. That's what it is, isn't it? That's what it is. You're a plaything. A, a, don't you see that a new toy? It's not like that at all. She respected me. We just didn't sit there snogging away for seven hours. Well, we chatted, we talked about, about life and books and politics and culture. Oh, yes, I taught her a few things she didn't know. <laughs> Politically naive she was. I sorted her out there. And have a couple of visits, she'll have the old vote labour posters up in the window. <laughs> Your chair knocked out by you now, is it? Oh, blimey, you don't half think it all of yourself, do you? You're full of yourself, ain't you? Well, listen to me, mate. Now, listen carefully to this. This is the voice of experience talking. Oh, God. When I was your age, I was better looking than you are. Naturally, you were taller as well, weren't you? No, I wasn't <laughs> But I was wiry with it. And I've still got more bleeding hair than you have, so you... <laughs> Anyhow, I was a bit of a goer on the quiet. You didn't know that, did you? Oh, yes. I've seen that. Photo of you in the store and the Oxford bags, very sexy. <laughs> Standing beside a sherabang, one foot on a crate of brown ale, very dashing. <laughs> I was very dashing. Even though I say it myself, I was a fine figure of a man. I haven't always been old. I've had me moments. Didn't start with you, you know. <laughs> you listening? <laughs> oh, oh, dog, I can hardly wait. All right, then. This is the point. Birds like this one never left me alone. All the ladies was after me, and there was more of them in those days. All them big squares in London. There was houses then, not bed sitters, with maids and butlers. I used to go around them streets. Belgrave Square, Wilton Crescent. I used to ring me old bell and bawl at me crying. They was hanging out the windows, they were. It's an occupational hazard, rich birds. I see. All these young guards officers in the blues, they're all honourable fit steptoes. Is that what you're to ask? Uh? <laughs> no, I'm not. Don't you be vulgar. I'm only trying to open your eyes. Nothing like this has ever come across you before. It's happened to me every day. It happens to all the lads. You've just got to take it in your stride. Burn the round fancy chair. Right. Fair enough. Part of the business. But don't let it go to your head. Don't hang around. <coughs> don't for even sake hang around. Move in. Move on. Move out. There's always another house next door. You've always had the nasty tendency to caution everything, haven't you? <laughs> You've been living amongst junk so long, you can't recognise anything beautiful anymore. This isn't a case of move in, move on and move out as far as Dorothea is concerned. Now listen, Dad. I've been waiting a long time for something like this to happen to me. Please, don't try to degrade it.
So are you going to see her again? Yeah. I'm going out tomorrow morning. I'm tucking some of my books around there. We're going to discuss them. You're not going out in the round? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. I'm afraid you'll have to make other arrangements, Dad. Well, I'm not saying that this is going to be the end of Steptoe and Son. At least, not yet. We'll just have to wait and see. But if Dorothea and I find that we have the basis for a durable union, we may decide to shack up together. <laughs> but that's all in the future. Uh, listen, uh, listen, listen. Dad, please. We're both grown-up people. We know what we're doing. We went into this with our eyes wide open. We know we may be starting something we may not be able to control, but that's the way it's got to be. I think Dorothea expressed it perfectly when she said, Held, in this age of atomic uncertainty, we must grab our happiness where we can find it. Oh, go blimey. <laughs> Call it a, a liaison dangerous, but then life's like that. It's total war, Dad. You've got to go along with it. And it started this morning on her doorstep. The dike has been breached, Dad, and all the talking in the world can't stop the deluge of passion. It's opened up. After ten past four, when our man gets back home. No, I don't see his marriage. It's how that you know. But it's a mockery. She hadn't seen him for five years. She told you that, did she? He was a brute and a bully. But they had nothing in, in common. It was all a big mistake. So she, she was young. She didn't know what she was doing. Would you deny her a chance of happiness? What? With you? <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> what? Let me take you out of all this, my darling, and come and live with me down in my junkyard. <laughs> she spun you a right yarn, ain't she? I never had such a load of old cods wallowing all me life. <laughs> you walk in that place tomorrow and you'll come shooting out of that front door with all your books off. Yes, she probably won't even recognise you. We shall say. We shall say. Now, what shall we talk about tomorrow? Who shall I introduce her to? He said, go on, up it. Go on, don't create a fit. Keep it going, eh? Oh, but I was here yesterday. Well, then, don't be greedy. 